Welcome to another special episode of the Will and Fine Fabric Studio podcast. My name is Jule and I am the dyer and maker behind Will and Twine Fiber Studio, which is a small uh, creative space with, for natural dyeing and yeah, all kinds of natural crafts in northern Germany. Um, this video is um, a little bit of a preview video um, uh, for the next shop update that's about to approach. So I'm not going to talk about my personal knitting today. I'm going to chat you through um, the colorways that I will have available for the next shop update. Um, for those who are new here, um, I do these previews just so you can see um, the colorways a bit better than just on photos. So um, yeah, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a quick run through about the info on every base that I'm going to have available and then show you some colorways that will be um, in the shop update. So um, first of all, um, this update is the one where our new limited edition custom spun Romney yarn will go live. So um, I'm talking about this more in depth in a dedicated video that I'm going to link um, where I'm introducing this base a little bit more in depth. But um, just a quick run through. Um, I do get yarns custom spun um, for the shop every now and then. Um, and I saw some local wool um, for that every time and yeah, so um, these are very limited in numbers um, and won't come back after I've um, sold it. So um, just so you know, if you fancy one of the colorways that might be shown in this video on this base, um, then maybe be on time for the update just so you can make sure you can get um, the colorway you wanted because once it's gone, it's gone. Um, but yeah, as said, I'm going to cover a little bit more about it in that dedicated video and I'm also having a separate video on um, local yarn production and how I do all this and how I source the wool and what my values are behind that and everything. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to link that video as well. Um, and so without further ado, I'll start with the more classic bases and we'll have the limited edition colorways at the end of the video. Also a quick disclaimer that I should maybe mention before starting um, to show you the colorways. Um, we will not restock our Corydell sock um, in this update just because um, we are going to have the limited edition um, which is also suitable for sock knitting and so I felt like it would be nicer to um, highlight this base instead of having another sock base. We still have a few colorways left in the shop so if you fancy getting yourself a pair of Cordial sock rather then you should be able to do that but we're not restocking uh, for this update. There will be in the next update there will be more Cordial sock again but as said, I wanted to shine the light a little bit on our new base, um, which I'm going to tell you a little bit more about later. I mentioned this in my um, introduction video of the yarn already, but if you need any help with um, color combinations or anything, feel free to uh, email me or DM me on Instagram and I'll try my best to help you with combining the colors. Um, just because this yarn is exceptionally um, suitable for color work. So I um, think it would be nice. I'm going to be available um, most of next week to help you with some color choices. So yeah, feel free if you're not sure whether the combination you chose might be to your liking or whatever, then just hit me up and I'm trying my best to help. <laughs> so. Yeah, without further ado, um, let's jump right into chatting about what's going to be available. So, um, after you've been shopping the last uh, update like crazy, like the last update at the end of November was like 
crazy. We have been packing packages um, and orders for so many days and I had help, but it was still just a lot to do. And um, yeah, I just wanted to say a big thank you for being so supportive and everything. So yeah, this time I tried to restock um, most of the all-time favorite colorways because there isn't a lot left in the shop at the moment and I wanted to make sure that I can start the new year with a good old restock of a couple of colorways that have been sold out um, since November now. So um, let's start out maybe with a BFM Massam basis. Um, BFM Massam will be available both in the DK and the 4-ply weight. Um, so we didn't have the 4-ply, I think, in the last update. Um, so it's a, going to be a restock and I don't think we have anything left of it in the shop at the moment. So yeah, I tried to dye a little bit more of it this time. So if you've been looking for some of the BFMR, some 4-ply, then um, I should have you covered in this update as well. Um, so our BFL mass and bases, um, they contain of 75% BFL, so blue face Leicester fiber, and 25% massum sheep, which is a mid-brown sheep, so the whole base itself is not white, but rather a bit of a grayish brown, or brownish gray. <laughs> so all the colorways dyed on this base are a bit more muted, and yeah, I just really enjoy dyeing on it. It is a worsted spun yarn and has a lovely drape and it has a very warm touch to it. Um, and I find it exceptionally um, suitable for garments and also accessories. So um, this is the perfect shawl yarn for sure. And also it's really nice for any kind of sweater. Um, we have this in two yarn weights, one of them being the fingering or four ply base, which is 400 meter per 100 grams. And then we also have the BFMSM DK, which is 240 meters per 100 grams. And both of these bases will be available again in larger quantities. And I've actually decided to dye the colorways all on both bases. Um, one, also because I don't want to show 10 color ways per base and then have a lot of them on the limited edition again because I think this uh, video would be like one and a half hours long else. <laughs> but um, also because I didn't want you to be like, oh, um, I would love this colorway but on this um, yarn weight because I have a pattern for that and then it doesn't work. So this time all colorways will be available both on the BFMS and DK and on the BFMS and 4 ply. So I'm going to show the colorways only once and they are available on both bases because I thought this way it might also be a bit um, less of a super long chatty video and yeah. Um, as all of my yarns, the BFM Assam bases are non-super wash, plastic free and ethically sourced. Um, so yeah, no artificial additives or anything, just pure wool and that's also what I wanted to say because I never, for me, this is something so natural that I don't even think about it anymore, but I should maybe mention this to people who might be new around here. So um, yeah, I only dye on natural um, wool and without any additives, without any artificial fibers or anything. So um, all the colors I'm using are natural dyes. That's maybe also something I should mention every now and then. I don't use any artificial um, dyes and um, with natural dyeing it can be very power and um, resource consuming. So I have designed my process in the way that I use as little resources and um, yeah, have a little an impact that's as little on the planet as it can be. So that's just about little disclaimers and without further ado, let me finally show you the colorways. On the BFM Massam basis, I'm gonna say it this way and you know that it just means that it's available on both bases. We have 
restocked um, some classics such as our um, very popular colorway artichoke which is a light green with a coolish kind of undertone and it's very wearable and very um, yeah just very muted and lovely I think so this is the artichoke colorway and by the way this is also the one that um, I'm showing in my last yarn preview that the Elfriede shawl was knitted maybe I should show it again hang on a second so I'm already talking about this in my latest podcast episode and in the last yarn preview but I wanted to quickly show you the Elfriede shawl um, which is knitted in the artichoke colorway but on the BFM some DK base so yeah this is the artichoke colorway um, and I think it's also very suitable if you're trying to knit something more spring like um, because it's kind of a more springy kind of color am I getting too dark here or is it okay I'm never sure whether it's easier for you to see maybe like this or is it no okay next up is another classic that we have been selling out of every time um, and this colorway is called caramel and we used to only stock this um, on the BFMS and DK base ever since the Himmlebee shawl by Lecker or Fabertels was released in collaboration with Eva of the Blue Rabbit House and this colorway always sells out in like no time so we also decided to bring it on the BFMS and fall ply so this is the colorway caramel it's like a nice and warm reddish undertone brown and then there is another favorite that is like last time I had this on the four ply base it was gone in like 10 minutes and this is the almond colorway and it's a bit more of a neutral beige kind of color if you compare it to the caramel so yeah these are the two together maybe just so you can see the difference and staying in the kind of brownish um, color family we also will be restocking um, our maple leaf colorway which is a more of a rusty orange kind of brown um, and quite a bit more warm than caramel and almond like if you hold them next to each other you can see that the maple leaf is quite a bit more reddish in undertone is the light too bright now I'm not sure wait okay I think this should be more true to color I'm always trying to show you all these colorways just a natural lighting because I feel like that shows the color the best but yeah these are maple leaf caramel and almond and then we have one last um, colorway in the brownish kind of color family and that one was um, introduced for the first time in the last shop update yeah and it was also only available on the DK base but now we are also we've also dyed it on the four ply and this is Moro it's more if you compare it to the other brown tones it's more of a chocolatey darker brown um, and a little bit less reddish in undertone to for example maple leaf so it's a very rich color and I'm actually really drawn to it and for sure will at some point knit something out of this color so these are the kind of brown tones we are going to have something more warm and something more cool depending on what you maybe like more 
Um, so yeah, those were the brown tones. Sorry if I'm squeaking, I'm sitting on this, this very noisy chair again. But it's actually the most comfortable one, so I'm, yeah, I hope you can bear with me. So, um, going back to uh, the little bit more, yeah, let's say, like, reddish colors. Um, we have a restock of almost like a classic colorway, but also on the fall play, which is the Mountain Rose colorway. A nice blushy pink. And this one is also coming back on the um, DK base, of course. And um, what I wanted to say is that we also have maybe a very exciting design collaboration coming with that colorway on the DK base. I cannot tell you more yet, but stay tuned for the end of January because that's when it's going to be out. And yeah, I'm really excited. <laughs> and another classic that we always like to restock and that you always seem to very like is the lavender colorway which is like the more cool toned um, little sister to Mount Rose. If you want to compare the two, this is how it looks like. And then um, we added another purple to our collection. And this is actually um, a new colorway that we're bringing um, that's also going to be available on both bases, and that one is called Plum. And it's a very deep blue-toned purple that I think is really beautiful and very elegant. So, yeah, it reminds me of the skins of plums. And last but not least, we're going to have our all-time favorite mulberry which is kind of a dark berry tone again as well but it's more brownish in undertone than for example plum like plum is very cool in undertone and mulberry is more on the brownish reddish side so this was just a quick run through of the colorways for the BFM Massim bases. Again, um, all colorways will be available on both bases, um, four ply and DK. And there should be enough of each colorway that, regardless of size, anyone could knit a garment out of it. So, um, yeah, it should all work um, if you're on time for the update. Um, you should be able to snag enough skeins for um, maybe a sweater for yourself or an accessory or whatever <laughs> you would like to do. Um, so yeah, those are all the colorways on this one. Um, and I'm going to show you more colorways on our very excited limited edition now. Okay, on to the limited edition. Um, this one is called limited edition number four just because I'm kind of numbering them after the release time. So this is the fourth limited edition we're um, having available and um, it's a very special one um, because it's a white one. We did have quite a few naturally colored ones uh, recently and I also kind of am drawn to those, um, but I also wanted to make it possible to have a white one. And what I also anticipated with this one was creating a yarn that might be suitable for socks. Um, and that definitely worked out. So um, I'm sharing more about my um, little sock experiment that I did with this space in my little introduction video. Um, where I show you a pair of socks that I've been wearing for almost three months and how they hold up. Um, but yeah, I thoroughly tested it before, 
um, recommending it as a sock yarn because yeah you never know it can be pretty once knitted up but you never know how it holds and um, so far we're not experiencing any um, like breaking down of the yarn or anything so that's very nice and um, just a quick run through of the hard facts it's 100% um, local Romney fiber from um, a shepherd that is located around 45 minutes um, from where I live by a car and um, what's especially especially awesome about him is that um, he keeps um, the sheep um, in a very nice condition and um, he's actually in the process of becoming um, certified organic which means I cannot call this yarn organic yet because he doesn't have a certification yet but the circumstances um, for the animals are already um, to up to the standards of an organic certification so um, yeah it's a very high um, standard for animal welfare and everything and um, yeah, it's also very local to me. It was then spun at a small um, family-run mill um, to uh, 400 meter per 100 grams uh, woolen spun two-ply yarn. Um, so yeah, pretty standard fingering weight um, yarn. So it's very versatile because it can be either knitted on its own or combined with um, like a strand of something else maybe. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting something. Oh yes, one thing I have to uh, mention, which I'm also talking more in depth about in my uh, introduction video, is that it has the same gauge as um, Tuka wool fingering. Um, I knitted these two swatches on the same needle size um, with both the limited edition and the Tuka wool, um, and they turned out exactly the same size. So. In case you're lacking a color in the palette that I've dyed um, for maybe a color work project or something, um, you can also swap it for um, tuka wool and the other way around because if there's a um, pattern you like that was designed in tuka wool fingering, then you could easily use our limited edition. Um, this swatch is around, I think, um, 25. 25 or 26 stitches per 10 centimeters and then I think 30, 32 rows and that's a pretty standard fingering gauge I think um, so it can definitely be um, used for any kind of pattern that calls for a, a standard fingering weight yarn um, I can definitely recommend this one for socks. I showed this one in the other video as well and um, these are the gold socks that I knitted out of our mulberry colorway and um, size-wise they turned out as the pattern stated so you should be able to also swap it for a regular um, like you could swap a normal fingering weight sock yarn for this yarn so by the way this yarn can definitely be combined very well with a strand of mohair, which is actually what I'm wearing right now. This is my um, fairy bouquet sweater by Joan Ang, and it's um, knitted out of the limited edition with a strand of uh, Knitting for Olives soft silk mohair. I'm also going to insert some more wearing clips of this um, sweater just so you can see and I'm talking more in depth about it in the introduction video of the yarn. I hope this is not like too repetitive but I never want to expect that you watch all my videos and so I don't want anyone to miss out on information but yeah it's a little bit of a fine line on how much to repeat and what not. Um, but I think what you want to do um, the most is see the colorway so I should maybe just stop rambling and show you. Um, what we're going to start out with is a very warm nice brown tone that's called Moral. You can see it looks very different on uh, the white base than it does on the um, 
on the BFMSM just because the undertone of the BFMSM is so much cooler due to the gray undertone that um, it looks a lot more warm on the white base, which I actually love. I think it's a super pretty kind of warm brown. And this is Moral. You can also see the texture of the yarn a bit better here. It's really nicely twisted in a way that it's, the twist is very visible, which is definitely what I like in a yarn. And yeah, this is the colorway Moral. Um, and then we have another colorway that we also have on the BFM Massim. It's Artichoke. This is a very light and soft and kind of coolish undertone green. That's just very fresh and spring-like. And then we have another very spring-like colorway that is called Bloom. Inspired by my good friend Eva of the Blue Rabbit House, who's the queen of all kinds of pink yarns. So she helped me name this one. <laughs> um, it's called Bloom and it's a like a p light pink but with a more of a reddish, not reddish, but warm undertone. So it's a bit salmony light pink, I would say. Maybe a tiny bit less salmony than in camera. This is maybe more true to color. But it's like, yeah, just a pretty nice light pink color. And then we also have another very fresh color that I think is just super nice. And that one is called Dandelion. And it's just a very golden, nice kind of mustardy yellow. And this is just very spring-like, I think. So this is Dandelion. And I think um, I've tried to actually dye a couple of, like quite a few neutrals and a couple of more punchy colors, um, just because I feel like this yarn is so su suitable for color work that it would be nice to have a lot of contrast um, going on. And since the base is white and the it's easier to dye more bright colors on it. I thought, why not go for a couple of more um, yeah, bright colors such as this one. Um, but speaking of the neutrals, we also have quite a few tones that are not as um, punchy, such as this one that's called Cloud. And it's a very hard to describe color because it's like a cream with tiny bits of a grayish purple going through it. Don't know if that's actually picking up on camera, but here you might be able to see it. Like there is a tiny fleck of like a purple gray. I think it's just a very lovely neutral and I think it could pair with very well with um, some of the other more punchy colorways. So that one's Cloud, and then we have another slightly more neutral color that is called Shell. And this is the one that I knitted this um, sample I'm wearing out. So this is the Shell colorway, and it's um, something between a beige, a rosy tone, and a purple, and it's just the perfect neutral for me. Um, I just think it has enough interesting color in it to be not too neutral, but it still is not so punchy and I think it looks great with all kinds of um, other colors that you could combine with it, which is why I thought if I have like, you know I'm more of a minimalistic person, if I have something as exciting or as, yeah, like a pattern with so much going on like it is in this one, I like it to be in a color that's not too like screaming at me, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So that's the colorway shell and it's just very pretty. Um, yeah, I combine it with some um, Knitting for Olive 
Soft Silk Mohair in the Mushroom Rose colorway. So if in, ca in case you enjoy this uh, kind of color, then um, that's the combination I've used. And the mohair adds a little bit of, I don't know if that's visible here, but it adds a little bit of warmth to the color. So that's just something I really like. Um, that's the shell colorway. And then we have something uh, slightly more um, punchy again, which is this one. And that is the colorway Dawn. It's quite a reddish orange. I would say it's a little bit less red in real life than it is on camera. Um, it's a bit more orange. Yeah, maybe you can see it here. But it's. I think it would make a perfect contrast um, for a color work sweater mid, with maybe something more neutral or maybe something more brown like the moral colorway. Um, I think that would be really pretty. And yeah, that's the Dawn colorway. So, um, the next colorway is this one and it's a lovely warm toned beige called Parchment. I think it's an, again a very perfect neutral to pair with one of the more punchier colors maybe or also to knit on its own because it's also nice this way. Um, and then we also have the colorway Lavender which is another purple but definitely more purple than the shell colorway. The shell is more of a neutral whilst the lavender is actually the light lavender lilac -y kind of color. So this is the lavender color and now I really have to remember which ones I showed already and which not. It's kind of a challenge with so many new colors. Um, but here we have one of my favorites from this collection actually and this is the colorway Raisin and it's a deep dark berry red kind of tone and I think again this would make such a beautiful contrast in color to something like for example parchment. I think this would be so pretty. Um, so this is Raisin and then we have another colorway that I really like um, that's more on the neutral side again um, and this one is called Moon and it's a little bit almost variegated between a light purple and a sandy beige. Here you can see better that it has a slight bit of variegation and I think that's just so nice and I can imagine it would be really pretty to bring out either the more sandy tones or the more um, purpley tones, um, maybe also with a strand of mohair or something. I could imagine that really well with that colorway. Um, and then one more neutral that's in a bit of a different um, color family and that one is the Dove colorway. We had that one on the Corridor sock before and it's kind of like a bluish gray. That would also be very lovely as like a base color for a, um, for a color work that could be um, knitted with other of the more punchier colors such as maybe um, Mulberry. This one is a classic as well by now. It's a bit more blue toned in real life, I would say, and would go really well with the Dove colorway, I feel. So, yeah, this is the Mulberry and the Dove colorway. Then we have 
another in, one in the reddish kind of color family that is called coral. Ooh, it's really punchy in the camera. It's definitely not as punchy. I have to see if I can hold it with something that will tone down. Yeah, this is more true with together with parchment. This is the coral colorway and it's pretty much a coral. <laughs> um, and it's just really nice and warm and very spring-like, I feel. And I could totally see these three. Oh, how am I going to hold this? Just a second. These three in a convo, maybe. The coral, the mulberry and the parchment. Or even, we have another beige tone that I'm going to show you now. Um, that's a bit more pinkish in undertone than um, parchment and this one is linen. So it's another beige tone but with a touch more rosy pink to it and I think these three would be really perfect together. Or even, maybe I should show a couple of combinations actually, uh, once I'm done. But maybe even with a darker colorway, um, or something from a different color family. But uh, last but not least, we will of course also have some of the undyed um, yarn. It's not as yellow as it is in the camera, it's a bit more neutral, but it has a creamy kind of undertone. And I think if you would like to add some, just like a white accent to something you've might, you might be knitting in color work, then I also have a few undyed skeins um, available in the update. So, these are quite a few colorways and I'm a little bit covered in wool right now. <laughs> but um, let me try and show you a couple of combinations. Um, that I think could be really pretty um, for color work knitting. So if you want to go the little bit more pastel kind of route, then I think Dove Lavender and the neutral um, undyed colorway would be perfect. Ooh, also, I think this combo could be really nice for a stay soft shawl. Um, I'm sharing my oh is this the lavender i'm sorry this is the shell callaway sorry i'm getting confused myself <laughs> um but i'm sharing a few pattern suggestions in um the introduction video um that i made about the base and so if you want to have some inspiration about the um the colors um that you could use for a color work um, then just check that video out because I have a few recommendations and one of them being the Stay Soft Shawl that uses three skeins of fingering weight and I think this would be such a pretty combo or maybe even if not with the um, undyed maybe with a beige like parchment these are parchment shell and dove which I think is such a pretty combo or maybe if you want to go like a little bit punchier or with a bit more color, I could also imagine this one really well. This is Cloud, Bloom and Raisin. Which is a really nice color. Or we'll go maybe a little bit more warm toned with everything and go for the Morrow, Dawn and the Parchment. There are so many colors I'm actually a little bit, <laughs> like I, I totally didn't realize that we had so many colors but again I think it's nice to have something to choose from when you want to um, like knit color work or something. This is also a nice combination with the moral coral, moral coral, <laughs> and the artichoke colorway. Or maybe I also like this one kind of with bloom, 
moral and the linen colorway. This is really pretty as well. And as you can see, there are like endless endless combinations uh, that you could make with this yarn. Let me see if I can put get together something with the yellow. Um, yeah, this is pretty. Let's uh, maybe with this one. So this is the dandelion shell and the moral. So you can see that this is more of a bright color that would shine very well against these two. And yes, so there are endless uh, possibilities, I would say, to combine those. And as said, um, if there is a certain combination you'd like to see, um, feel free to let me know and I'll make sure I can um, show you um, maybe a picture or something. Okay, so now I've been talking. <laughs> So much. I've actually re just recorded the other, um, like the intro episode of the yarn as well. So I'm recording both of these episodes in one day, and <laughs> I feel like I've been talking to myself and the camera for like <laughs> two hours or so. But yeah, it's just something I like to do because, especially with limited edition yarns, I think it's good to provide you with as much info as I can give you because, yeah, I mean. You don't. You cannot compare it like to something else. If I don't provide you with something, um, like with some information on how it might feel and everything. So, anyways, um, a little reminder: the shop update will be next Friday, January fourteenth, um, at eight p.m. GMT plus one, and I'm also going to send out a reminder. Um, with my newsletter so um, maybe make sure to be subscribed to that and I'll also try and keep the little countdown thingy um, on Instagram in my Instagram stories although for some reason it has been kind of glitchy in the most recent times and I don't know whether it works or not <laughs> but um, yeah as said I'm going to send out a reminder um, on my newsletter anyways so, maybe I should also mention that this limited edition is going to be the last dyed one in a, quite a while. So if you are looking into naturally dyed limited edition yarn from me, then maybe take this opportunity and uh, get this Romney limited edition because the next one in, once in the works might not necessarily be very suitable for dyeing or at least the color the natural color is so pretty that I don't know if I will dye it at all or if so I will only dye parts but at the moment I'm leaning towards not dyeing um, the next ones so yeah maybe <laughs> better get this one this time and yeah if you need more information just watch the little intro video because I'm showing um, three samples in this one and I'm also talking about my experiences with the socks and with um, combining it with a strand of mohair and everything and so yeah I just definitely recommend checking this video out and yeah if any more questions occur hit me up and I think that's it for this little preview episode Thank you so much for watching and sticking around my rambles all the time. Um, I'm going to speak to you soon with another knitting episode actually because yeah I've, I've had a little bit more knitting time over the holidays and I hope to continue um, making time for it um, in the next week so yeah stay tuned for another episode and yeah, happy shopping with the update. I'm excited to see what colors you might come up with and what combinations and yeah, have a good day, have a good weekend. I hope you're gonna enjoy this little video and speak to you soon. Bye. <laughs>